All right, so the project for this weekend is we're gonna take this nose gear and all this stuff that I spent a bunch of time working on, rip it off, and redo everything on the firewall. So the reason for doing all this is that the structural firewall itself is just plywood with some fiberglass on either end, and that's not very resistant to any engine fires that might have, so it's kind of a bad firewall. So what we're gonna do is use this um, ceramic blanket. This is the kind of stuff they use to insulate kilns. And we're gonna put that in between the structural firewall, this, this wood, and this sheet of aluminum. So we're gonna make, we're gonna rip all this off. I'm gonna make a cardboard pattern with the box that that came in. And then we can go ahead and cut the aluminum to fit, cut the blanket to fit, and put it all back together. After that, my resin finally arrived, so I can go ahead and do my two-bid layup on the inside of here to get the nose gear well completely tacked in, or completely sealed in, like finally. And after that, everything on the nose of the aircraft is pretty much done, and we can focus on the main gear. Safety first. All right, so this fits pretty good. What I'm gonna do next is drill the five holes from the back. Uh, and then I'll, I'll have to mark the center, but I don't know if I can put a drill in there. And after that, we can divert this whole thing, sand it down, paint it, and install it on here with the uh, fiber tracks blanket. All right, so I've got this all fit to the plane. Um, I got the holes drilled and deburred, and those all check with the position on the actual mount itself. So now uh, it's time to just sand this down, paint it, and then we can go ahead and install it on the aircraft. There's something on this label about not spraying it in an enclosed garage with a space heater running, which is why I'm not going to read the label. Now while the firewall is drying, I'm going to go ahead and cut the fiber frax blanket for this guy. Um, the original plans wanted 1 16th of an inch fiber frax in between the wood firewall and the other one. However, in the 320 and up, they started using uh, like 7 sixteenths of final facts. This is a half inch, so it's pretty much the same. Um, however, that now means that you need some sort of way to structurally space out the engine mount from the firewall. That way, the actual compaction there isn't just from the squish of this fabric. So I just threw some washers on there. Uh, that should work. Again, all they're trying to be is a solid base. The 320 kit comes with uh, actual proper spacers, but this is what I have, and uh, I think it'll work just fine. So while we're waiting for the paint on the firewall to dry, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Now, I've heard this stuff is pretty nasty, so I'm going to be wearing gloves. Obviously, I have a proper respirator on. Um, I don't think this is something you really want to be breathing in, so it's going to get set into the firewall, and then I'm not going to touch it again. So I've got this temporarily held in with some 3M double-sided tape, which didn't work very well, a clamp, and then for the most part, it's kind of just shoved in there. So the firewall is mostly dry, um, so I'm going to go ahead and set the firewall on here. 
Now one issue with my little washer modification and having more of this blanket is that I might run into issues when it comes time to mounting the cowling because this is going to push this firewall out a little bit and I don't think there'll be enough there to have the proper edge distance to put those screws in. So I'm going to have to find a way to extend this lip. Also, I think these bolts are going to be too short. Um, I measured it out and some of them will make it with a proper one to two threads showing on the end of the nut, but some of them won't. So I'm going to mount it anyway and then I'm going to get some new bolts on order. Um, that way when those come in, I can just take them out one by one, do the swap and it'll be completely fine. But for now, I'm just going to put this stuff on. I'm really glad I had the respirator and the glasses. This is pretty nasty stuff um, and I'll be happy to get it sealed up. And then that'll be it for tonight. I'm going to go clean these clothes up because this stuff just gets everywhere. So here's the completed firewall. I don't think it turned out too half bad for just being a rattle can and a quick job. Um, one thing that I like to do that's kind of fun is I'll sign the inside of pieces when I close up a major portion. Um, I think getting the engine mounted is a pretty major portion, so I just went ahead and signed the inside of the firewall. Theoretically, no one should ever see that again um, unless the plane gets really severely damaged and parted out, which I hope doesn't happen. But I just think it's kind of fun. Um, on my last plan, I signed the inside of the wings before we did the final covering of those. So go ahead and try and get this mounted without uh, disturbing the insulation too. Alright, well that didn't turn out too half bad. I still have some trimming that I need to do up here um, and I'm obviously going to need to replace those bolts. Both my hunches were correct. As you can see, these bolts are not good. It's not even close. It's not even engaging the nylock. The center one is and my suspicion is that that's because these have a little bit more of a pad built up behind them on the inside of the structural firewall, the wood part. Uh, and so these are gonna need a little bit longer, but again, my plan for these is to just order some longer bolts, take one of them out one at a time, and then obviously compress this so those washers in there don't fall out, uh, and then we should be good to go. And then the good part is the nose gear still goes in its place where it should, so <clears throat> it still retracts nicely. It doesn't bind or anything like that, so that lets me know that I pretty much hit the mark when I mounted this uh, up a second time. But yeah, there's a little bit of bulging on the ends here. This is only 62 thousandths or 1 16th aluminum. So I kind of expected that. You can definitely see it in the video. It'll probably help if I get over here a little bit more. Um, but as you can see where it's tied in right here, it's definitely, there's some more clearance and then it kind of bulges out from that insulation. But I don't think that'll be a big problem. Worst case, I can go ahead and just stick a couple bolts on the end uh, here, like in the spots where it's bulging to kind of pull it back in. But I definitely think this was worth it. Maybe I should have gone with a little bit thicker metal right here, but really all this piece of metal is there for is to retain that fiber frax um, or that whatever it is, ceramic insulation. And I am really glad that I went with the upgraded insulation. I don't think 1 16th of an inch of this is really gonna do a whole lot. And especially in the summertime, the more insulation I can have to keep the heat away from this hot, hot engine from getting into the cab, the better. So I'm pretty happy with this. It is gonna take a little bit of effort to figure out the bolts and to figure out how we're gonna mount the bottom of the cowling and I guess the top as well. But I definitely think that that effort was, is all gonna be worth it in the end. Living three minutes away from a Harvard Freight is both a blessing and a curse. Okay, good enough. All right, the next step to getting this stuff complete is to glass in this tunnel so that I can put the uh, down lock, like over center link, onto the nose gear and get this uh, all tied up. So I'm gonna sand this back a little bit, uh, and then uh, we'll put some tape in and wait a little bit and see what happens.
All right, well this wasn't very pretty. Looks like there's some spots that I missed where the fabric isn't fully wetted down. Um, this is a two bid layup, and then there's a three bid layup that happens on the inside. I'm gonna wait until the fuselage is flipped over, because as you can see, I kind of struggle with these vertical edges. But for my first layup on the plane, I don't think this is horrible. I'm probably gonna pour a little bit more epoxy and just wet out these areas that you can see are definitely not saturated. Um, but other than that, it looks like the top is pretty good. It's hard for this to come across on camera. Um, yeah, so after, while this is drying, I'm gonna just go ahead and get started on the BL50 little end ribs over here. Uh, and then from there, I'm just gonna kind of play it by ear, but I think we should be able to finish out the nose gear section uh, pretty quickly after that. All right, so I got the nose gear well all glassed in. There's two bit of tape all the way around the inside of here. It wasn't perfect. I really struggled with that fast hardener. Um, it just set up way too quick. This stuff has a pot life of only like four to six minutes. So that didn't leave me with a whole lot of time to set this in. It's not pretty, but I think it will still be strong and it's just gonna get sanded and covered anyway. I also got this piece done on the firewall. Um, this is a guard between everything firewall forward, like the engine and the inner gear well. So it keeps all the heat and oil and junk out of here and kind of keeps it clean. There's also a seal that goes on the uh, nose gear strut itself that when the gear is closed, it'll seal up against this, um, but that's gonna come a little bit later because I'm still waiting for all this stuff to dry. So next steps for here, I ordered the new bolts that are gonna come in for this. Um, and then after that, pretty much we can go ahead and install the over center link that's gonna keep this nose gear up. Uh, put all that in here. Uh, once we're ready, we can drill holes and everything. I also got a layup done since I got my glass and some more epoxy. So I got the layup done for the BL50 ribs, which are what go on the end of the main spar here and there. Uh, and then once those are done and cut out, I can start kind of laying out the, the whole uh, rear spar area and where the gear is going to go. And once that's done, then we can put the glue that in, glue the belly on, and uh, we'll be good to start uh, putting this thing and flipping it over again. It's on its gears. So this is all going to do for tonight. We've got a huge storm rolling in, but uh, I think we're we'll making pretty good headway. All right, so quite a lot has happened since the last time I got videos of anything. I actually had had a buddy come out and kind of help with all the stuff for the nose gear, so I didn't get a lot of footage of that. But I did get the longer bolts in from Aircraft Spruce, and these all these now are torqued down. I've got torque seal on them. I went ahead and installed everything hydraulics and downlock wise. So we've got the over center links right here. Um, that goes into here and there's a kind of a bolt that goes in and that engages with uh, a phenolic on the inside of here. The downlock gas spring is right here. That's part of this whole assembly. And then that bolts down there. It was supposed to go through the firewall, but I decided to relocate it. So if I need to get at that bracket, I can actually remove it without having to take out, you know, the engine. Uh, and then we also got the um, nose hydraulic ram installed and adjusted mostly. Um, there's a kind of a little blocker thing. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's just down in there. And that will limit the range of this based on how much this is adjusted in and out. Um, and right now, we I have it a little bit on the loose side, and that's just to be kind of conservative. Basically, I want the travel of this to be more limited by the movement of the cylinder itself than by the structure of this, because now it's going to hit its own internal stops instead of just putting a ton of stress and pressure on the gear uh, well that's in here. This is beefed up. There's a huge layup on the outside of this that goes between the phenolic blocks that are in here and the phenolic blocks that these bolt through. Um, but I still want to be kind of on the conservative side. Worst case, if I need to tighten it up, like if this thing, when the nose gear is down, kind of starts to sag and you know come up towards the gear door from gravity, um, I can tighten that. It, it's really easy to do. So I figured I'd at least go conservative at first so I don't break anything and then I can add pressure as it's needed. But overall, this thing locks as it should. Um, we got this, the angle of this. You'll notice it is angled back just a little bit. And that's done intentionally because uh, Lance Air wants to see about two to three degrees of uh, kind of aft squat on the airplane. Um, and so we angled this back about three degrees so that it would match that and it would sit level when it's on the ground. But yeah, this mechanism works great. We spent a lot of time kind of making sure everything was aligned properly. Um, if I can break the over center, there we go. It just goes right in and it drops down how it should. 
and nothing really hits in there. So yeah, overall this went together really, really well. Uh, I was pretty happy with how things kind of lined up for the most part. Uh, it was a lot better than I thought it would be. It just kind of seemed to work. So yeah, this is gonna be calling it quits for this week. Um, got quite a bit done. This is mostly there. Again, we can go ahead and just pop that up. And then the spring will lock it into position. So the next step, obviously, I've talked about this before, is gonna be the mains, but that's gonna do it for this one. Uh, we'll catch you next time.